Alrighty guys, good evening, good morning, happy Monday, uh, starting a little bit late here, um, I had Mother's Day yesterday, had to take care of the use, you know, sometimes you have to go talk to your parents, every good son does without any sort of social outcry against him, what is it called, it's like social manhandling, when people make you feel guilty for not doing something, it's guilty. I think it's a psychology term for it. Anyways, uh, went and did stuff with my ma. My ma yesterday and visited my brother and uh, we hung out, had some food, usual, you know, stuff stuff you do with family time and such. So anyways, I got back at midnight yesterday and obviously had to watch Got, so nothing was spoiled, although this season... I don't know what you're going to spoil on this season. This season is so fucking bad. This season of Game of Thrones is... So incredibly bad. So incredibly horribly bad, guys. I have no idea what they're smoking. Tonight's episode, guys, this is going to be spoilers, by the way. Uh, we're going to... Um, we're going to proceed this by saying hashtag spoilers. Because we were going to be talking about got spoilers here for... All that good stuff. Um... Yeah, it was a fucking... Just continuing on with the tradition of Season 3's dumpster fire. Just it was super fucking predictable, super cliche. Doing all the fucking shit that you'd expect from, like, fucking C-grade writers. Like, like you could have interns write better shit than they wrote at the end of Season 8 in Game of Thrones. It is fucking terrible. It's absolutely horrible. I don't, I don't even know what the fuck they're doing, guys. I really don't. It's, the whole episode was just... I actually laughed, because it was just so fucking horribly done. I just laughed about some of it. Right up to the fucking part where um, the the dog stabbed his brother the, the 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 mountain, and they toppled over the edge of the fucking keep. <laughs> so fucking cliche. Oh, they finally finished their fight, guys. Like, Game of Thrones guys this season, they're too busy writing, like, plot twists where you don't expect it, and where they do something, um, they try to wow you with their intellect and tying things together that they forgot to write a fucking story. It is so fucking bad. Um, there basically isn't a story. It's just fucking random shit happening. And then just random events when they when they can't tie the two together, they just fucking get on their Adderall and just write, write a bunch of gibberish that they thought would work together. It was so horrible. And the whole episode just... I mean, it didn't make sense either from like... A, if you think about things logically... If you suspend your disbelief for a tiny bit, you know, and you're like, okay, let's think about things a little bit logically here. That's opposite suspend. If you don't suspend your disbelief, you know, and you're just like, okay, let's think, think about things with a little bit of logic here. Daenerys basically somehow magically just flies through an entire armada of ships that were trying to fucking shoot her with uh, harpoons. Stout and Uh and Then she blows up all the ships. Never gets hit once. Out of nowhere. For some strange reason, she felt the need to blow up all the ships out of nowhere. For some strange reason. Even though they're, they didn't have a fleet. There was nothing fucking there. Like, what are the ships going to fucking do? They were, like, on the other side of the castle in the water. They literally couldn't do anything. Except try and shoot at the dragon. Which, you know, depending on what side of the city she's on. Uh, you're talking about King's Landing here. Depending on what side of the city she's on. She wouldn't have actually gotten hit by them. Furthermore, when she blew up the ballistas on the wall, she didn't even bother to use the mountain as cover because there's a mountain and then there's walls that come out from the mountain. She could have went over and just did a line across them. Didn't do that. For some strange reason, the scorpion stopped even working about partway into the episode and they just gave up on life. Didn't even try shooting at the dragon anymore. So fucking stupid. Jamie... Like I said, guys, spoilers here. Jamie, despite them building his character over the entire fucking season, just tries and goes back to Cersei again, and then they fucking die in a stupid way again where the rubble falls on them. <laughs> just like the mountain and the... The mountain and uh, the hound killing each other. The fucking... They just die under rubble. It's like a Romeo and Juliet shit. <laughs> like... None of this shit made fucking sense. It was so badly written. If Jamie 
grew one iota, which we saw he did over the course of the entire fucking series, he would have killed Cersei. He would have stabbed her. It would have been the end of it. And, you know, he would have been broken and maybe he would have killed himself afterwards, but he would have killed Cersei. He wouldn't have tried to help her escape. He would have killed her. He didn't. He fucking didn't. He just he was just played the little bitch. Didn't grow at all throughout the entire series. Did absolutely fucking nothing. The entire fucking series. It, it didn't matter at the end of the season. It's just They just went back to, like, season one bullshit. It didn't fucking matter. The whole reason you have character growth is so shit like that doesn't happen again. You, you basically make characters grow over time where they realize that there's something wrong and despite themselves really liking a character, really liking interaction with that character, you know, they're, they're going to look past that to the greater good. They're going to look past that because they have to, because they, they know what's at stake, because they grew as a person, they grew as a character. All this just reeks of just fucking amateur writing, just fucking terrible writing. And then, like, you know, okay, okay, so Jamie can't live with himself after he tries to kill Cersei or succeeds at killing Cersei. Then he kills himself. That's how you end that. That's that's how you end it. You put down you put down your lover that you know can't make it through life, who has done so much wrong and she can't fix herself. You put her down and then you kill yourself. That's what should have happened. That's good writing. Because that means Jamie as a character has grown. Even you know, and maybe one of the side characters, maybe Brianna could have stepped in and tried to stop him from killing himself. Because, you know, she's smart enough to realize he's going to King's Landing and he doesn't fucking hate her. But actually, it turned out, guys, actually it turned out last episode that wasn't good writing. Literally, Jamie went to King's Landing not to kill Cersei. He just went there to be with her. <laughs> so it was actually true. Oh, my God, a plot twist, guys. You actually thought they did good writing. Like, like the, the writers at HBO are so enamored for Game of Thrones. They're so enamored with the idea of plot twisting that they decided to fuck everything, no matter what, just so you wouldn't predict what's going to happen. No, Jamie's not actually going to grow as a character. He's just actually really, really horrible. And, you know, Sansa's probably actually going to be the one that sits on the Iron Throne. Everyone's going to die. They're just going to kill each other. And then Sansa's going to sit on the Iron Throne because she, you know, is being bred to, uh, you know, uh, she grew up to live on it. And they're going to point back to some, some trademark signs throughout the seasons, which, you know, Sansa is actually kind of a leader at this point. Um, they're going to point back to all this, the telltale signs and, Oh my god, guys, spoilers, it's not actually going to be John, which, by the way, is the most worthless character in the series. He's done nothing except brought back the life. That's that's it. And he, some sort of prophecy he's supposed to fulfill, but he doesn't, because he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. It's just like, it's it's literally to train wreck, like, season three, or not season three, episode three this season. It's just fucking horrible. It's just absolutely fucking horrible. It, it makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And, you know, Jon Snow is supposed to have grown as a character. So, you know, he could have done multiple things this episode. He could have tried and stopped Daenerys from setting fire to fucking everything. You know, like, waved his arms at the dragon, ran up to him, and pointed at the bells or something that were going off. And it was pretty clear that Daenerys was going to set fire to everything anyways. Um, you know, killed, killed the eunuch. I forgot his name. He's dead. Uh, because Tyrion ratted him out. Good for him. For whatever that means. And, you know, ratted him out. He, of course, died immediately. And it was, you know, it's it's not one of these things. Like, they could have done so much foreshadowing and made it seem like, you know, Daenerys was doing something wrong. Like, Dragoas, or whatever his name is, the dragon, instead of killing the eunuch, he should have not killed him. Like, he should have refused the order to set fire to him. That would have been fucking cool. You know, and then Daenerys had to manually kill him or have one of her guards behead him. That would have been fucking cool. It would have been a telling sign that the land, you know, because the dragons are kind of these mystical creatures of the land, it would have been a telling sign that even the land knows that what she's going to do is wrong. Do they do that? No, they don't. He just gets set on fire. Just like every other fucking worthless character in the series. Just gets set him on fire. They just fucking set him on fire, guys. Just, okay. All right, you're dead. Cool. That, basically, I was, I was waiting for him to maybe just, you know, maybe utter something at the end of it to warn her. You know, another foreshadowing about her actions and where she's going with life. You know, you know something when he's on fire, you know, being a burning monk or something. You know what happened? Nothing. He just died. He just fucking died. It was sad. That was it. 
It's like literally like this whole series is written by fucking people on Adderall. I don't fucking get it. Like that's all they're on. It's just it's just a constant thought stream coming out into their keyboard and they think it's good because they've written like the last seven seasons of Game of Thrones. Absolutely fucking terrible. Absolutely terribly cliche end to the entire series. It's horrible, horrible writing. Absolutely terrible. It doesn't matter how much money they spent and you know how many catapults they fucking blow up and they torched the fucking sea the fucking city too. I thought, you know, when they talked about it was in season three where they had all that green shit under the city, I thought they're gonna blow up the city. Because it wasn't just under the keep, it was everywhere in the city, right? Did they? No. No, Cersei didn't fucking blow up the city, even though she's a spiteful bitch and she tried to use everyone as a meat shield. Did she actually blow up the city after people got in it? No. Why you know, she would have actually been a tyrannical ruler ruler that did something crazy like that if she did that. Did she do it? No. No, she didn't fucking do it. There's literally zero good... They don't even tie together a lot of the good mechanics, like like good good things that they've built up over the series. They didn't even tie them together in this episode, guys. They didn't even tie that shit together to help themselves out later on. And, you know, they blew up the cathedral, but there was still that green shit all over the city. The, the poison barrels. There's fucking everywhere. It's everywhere in the city. And... I'm pretty sure they did not clear it out. There is no mention of that whatsoever. So it was still fucking there, just everywhere. And at the end, when the whole city is burning, some of those burning fires were green, which is the whatever. It's it's like that napalm shit. It's the evergreen fire that they use to burn the fleet fleets to. Um, it was fucking everywhere in the city, right? Did Cersei do it? No. Should she have? Yes, definitely. If they wanted to take that to the extreme, showing her character and how much she just like how little she cares about everyone and how much she cares about her child or protecting herself she should have literally just blown up the city part of the city you know she didn't need to blow up the keep just everything else did she no she didn't fucking do anything Jon Snow Jon Snow the most worthless character throughout the series still despite all his battles he's fought and all of his leadership skills has no backbone whatsoever not only can he not set up to stand up to Daenerys even though he knows what she's gonna do uh, he's not the leader that everyone makes him out to be. What kind of fucking writing is this? Like I said, this this series is just like a straight up ruined orgasm. It is just straight ruined. They just did their best to ruin anything that could have actually worked out. Not even good or bad, good versus bad. Like we're talking about they ruined good writing just to say, haha, it didn't happen this way. And why? Why would you do that? You know, we're, we're past the fucking parlor tricks at this point. This is endgame. This is the end of the series, right, guys? This is where everything comes together, where it all clicks. And it's not. It is literally just a fucking stampede of bullshit. It is so horrible this season. Absolutely fucking terrible. Yeah, Jon Snow, anyways, throughout the series, just, okay, he doesn't set up to Daenerys. He's gonna... I thought at the end... Daenerys, well, Daenerys is probably going to kill him anyways. It's clear at this point he has basically 100% allegiance to her and fealty, so I'm pretty fucking sure that Daenerys is going to kill him and someone's going to kill Daenerys. Uh, is the way this is going to work out, because Cersei had the fucking dumbest fucking death with Jaime at the same time, so those are basically all the pictures. That leaves Arya, who's probably going to kill everyone. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking... That's We're going to talk about that a bit, too, about Arya uh, in this episode. But anyways, Jon Snow, okay... He's basically enamored with Daenerys, and he's going to hold to his word, because that's what he was taught through all the seasons, is definitely, <laughs> definitely, you know, he should definitely do the right thing and get stabbed to death, but he's not going to do enough of the right thing to actually stand up to someone that's literally going to burn the world alive. Okay. All right. Fine. You know, this, this is some sort of act of, you know, of attrition, or contrition? Contrition, I think is the right word. Fealty, you know, he's he's sworn his hand to Daenerys that he's gonna he's gonna fucking do it all. You know, he's he's gonna do everything for her. Okay, fine. There's no speech from him. He didn't really lead battle at all. There is a standoff with the Red Guard. There's a standoff with the Red Guard. Did he actually say anything to the Red Guard to help help make them surrender or rally his friends? You know, you are beaten. Hey, look at us. We have the, the the city's on fire. Don't waste your lives needlessly. There's all sorts of things that could have been said. And you know what was said? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. Like I said, once again, like they're, they're, they concentrated so hard on throwing nothing at you to keep you guessing that they ruined everything. They could have done every fucking opportunity they had in this series. They could have done. Jamie was supposed to, you know, he was supposed to be the likely character to go assassinate Cersei or change her mind. Never, didn't even get there in time. 
Uh, Arya and the Hound was supposed to get there in time. They never fucking reached her. Uh, the Hound reached her right at the end and then had a battle with his brother, yada, 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 for the fucking stupid. I, I don't know. What happened to Arya? Like, she got split off from the Hound at one point. Uh, I forgot who she chased down. It was, it was some, they got split up either way. Um, really, really fucking stupid shit. Anyways, Jon Snow just in the middle of the city. Like, he doesn't even lead the charge either. He just eventually shows up in the front lines. Doesn't say fucking anything to the guards to try and make them surrender or help them save their lives. To, bow, to bend the knee to the queen. The new queen, their ruler. You know? And, like, if it was good writing... You know, even if, even if the bells ring, you know, they could have bent the knee and then just, like, you know, like, made a path, right, for the soldiers to walk through. And the Daenerys just set fire on them anyways. Like, landed above them and literally just breathed fire on all these guys while the soldiers are looking at them. That would have been fucking brutal as shit. Another way they could have changed changed things up or showed Daenerys' iron grip that she's going to rule with, basically like Cersei, right? Like all the other all the other Targaryens, right? Just like everyone else. Just do a fucking like that. Just right in front. Just fucking blow the shit up, Right? Does she? No. No. And the bells ring, and like clockwork, she just fucking ignores him, which everyone knew she was going to do, and then she just went and set fire to the city. By the way, bells didn't fucking ring before they breached the city. They're supposed to breach the... The bells are supposed to ring to open the gates and let everyone in. And they breached the city. They're already in. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the city breach? Uh, yeah. It's just a random dragon just blew up the front door. Didn't hear it coming. It was a stealth dragon, by the way. It's, it's like, literally, like, shitty shitty writing from was What's that one with the stealth bus? Uh, where just people die in random, random ways. It's a horror movie, but it's, they're actually just fucking hilarious because they're so stupid. Um, not last, last effect. Um, I don't remember the name. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. We're just people die in stupid ways. It's basically about how someone dies. Is that all, that's all the movies are about, is how people die. You just gotta guess how they're gonna die. Anyways, just out of nowhere, the fucking front gates of the whole kingdom explode because there's a stealth dragon that just appears out of nowhere and flies through it. And you're like, okay. Uh, yeah, good thing those trebuchets weren't shooting at him. Good thing the people up top didn't turn around because they aren't in a high position whatsoever. Yeah, good thing nothing really fucking happened. The gates just fucking exploded out of nowhere. And you're, that, that was a head-scratcher, too. I was like, hmm. That was back before all the trebuchets died, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, scorpions. Back before the trebuchets died. And then they opened the gates, and no one looked at it, and it was just, like, rumbling, and then all of a sudden the gates exploded, and no one turned around. No scorpions, no one screaming. They just fucking gates exploded. You know, wow factor, guys. Wow, you didn't expect that, right? Well, I mean, you did after you kind of figured out what was going on, but it was so fucking stupid. It's so stupid, because you have a flying dragon once again, and there's no way... Like, what would have to been at, like, city level for that to happen? Like, a battering ram. And you're just like... Okay. All right. Well, I guess the fronts of the city, you know, the city gates are down. Anyways, Jon Snow basically did nothing useful. Um, they did this whole weird... I'm going to describe this for a bit as, like, Arya. Let's talk a bit about Arya. Arya does nothing useful. She does not wear a disguise, even though she's a faceless one. Even though she's a fucking assassin. She doesn't wear a disguise at anyone. There's no disguises at any point in time. What? Why? What? Like, she doesn't, like, take on the appearance of a guard? Like, a red guard? Or, you know, try to sneak into the keep? She literally just walks around in the open with the hound, who is more disguised than she is. What? What is the message we're sending here? Girl power? Is that it? You know... Like, does this even make sense anymore? Like, she's, she has such a big dick, she doesn't need to hide it. Yeah, I I don't... What did she even... What, we had, like, seasons about her training and learning the, the you know, be an assassin. And then she just knew this is none of it in the end of the season. Head scratcher, guys. Fucking head scratcher. Okay, fast forward a bit. Arya, I forgot how, gets separated from the Hound. Hound goes and dies in a tragically horrible event with the mountain. With the... With the Moen, which we sure no one could have actually saw. Good morning, Possessed. Spoilers. Got spoilers, by the way, for this season, this episode. Uh, he dies tragically with the Hound. Yeah, no one could have saw that. Him and just being reunited with his brother and tragically dying at the same time. Oh, God. Yeah, best ending ever. Anyways, uh, Arya gets split off. And then they go through this whole fucking Saving Private Ryan bullshit with her. Where she's just trying to save random people from the ensuing chaos by Daenerys. You know, and... 
just like randomly trying to save random. They had this fucking weird ass skit too with like these, these this like mom and a child that you saw at the beginning, and they're showing how tragic war is by having them seen multiple times throughout the series. And at the end, Arya couldn't even save them. She couldn't even save anyone, and then she huddles on her own after everyone is every single thing is dead except for a white horse. Every single thing is dead at the end. Every single thing is dead. Arya is so trapped. Like, what did she do her whole season? These characters are not season one characters. These are people that basically have lived. They have lived through the, like, wars. They've lived through wars. Arya went through intense training where she basically lost herself. You know, and then she re she reassembled herself as, like, this new, like, hardcore assassin slash possibly god-like character. And then she forgets all of it. The moment anything starts happening around her. Yeah, God is fucking terrible. It is a dumpster fire. It is so fucking bad this season. It's horrible. It is horrible. And everything here is playing out like I described in season three is not as far as like who's killing who, but basically you know exactly what's gonna happen. Season or episode four was just gonna be like a recovery from Winterhold and you know, getting things back together, going and seeing Cersei, and then they're going to have a fight in the King's Land. It is the most typical thing bullshit ever. And the last episode is they're going to be tying ends together. It's basically a case of who kills who at this point, because everyone's going to die. Uh, and more than likely Sansa or Sa Arya is not going to sit on this throne, because she's already is expressed herself as not being a ruler. Probably Sansa is going to end up sitting on the throne, and Daenerys is probably going to kill Jon Snow, because she knows that he... Uh, people think Jon Snow is going to kill Daenerys, but it's not going to work that way. Uh, the Game of Thrones... Um, Writers have already proven that they can't make anything good. And at this point, they're just going for a ha-ha moment. So, basically, Daenerys is going to kill Jon. Then Arya is more than likely going to kill Daenerys. And then Sansa is going to come in there and she's going to take over and rule. This is basically, I'm pretty sure it's Sansa is going to be the one that rules at this point in time. Um, everyone else is just basically going to die or something close to it. Or they're going to go live in a cabbage farm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they just ruined all the good characters. They just ruined all the good characters. Jamie, like they had opportunity for Jamie to actually show his character he built throughout the series, and they just they they went back to season one bullshit. Where like, what have we been doing the last seven seasons? What is what has happened here? What has actually happened in these seasons? I guess nothing really matters at this point. It's just nothing. Uh... Anyways, Arya, they, they go through this whole Saving Private Ryan bullshit where everything's on fire, everyone's dazed, you know, it's like shell shock as the flames rain down everyone, and everyone's getting set on fire, and, and Arya's stumbling around as things are falling around her, you know, and, like, what the fuck has she done? This is, like, shit that characters experience at the very beginning. She is a battle-hardened warrior. She is, she is literally, like, the faceless one, and she acts like a fucking lost child. What is this? And like, you know, oh, you know, a big hardcore woman. She even killed the Night King. But apparently, she bar she can't get her bearings. She can't get her bearings in a battle. She just has no idea what's happening around her or where to go. Or she even forgot the fact that she's supposed to kill Cersei, apparently. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good assassin, guys. Bravo, great assassin. Yeah, she showed us. <laughs> They're like awarding accolades just based on social justice warrior bullshit at this point. Is what it's coming down to. It's like, oh yeah, we'll give it to this demographic. Oh, this demographic will get something too. Oh, let's insert some sort of moderate political agenda at this point, you know. And they, just, they don't care. It's like this just feels like they don't care at all. Uh, Daenerys just going on a rampage. You could totally see that she's just going to burn everything. Uh, that should have been stopped. There's multiple characters that could have done that, either by persuading her or killing her. Um, and it just didn't fucking happen. As I mentioned before, the battle where they're just they're just uh, uh, the Red Guard are facing off with Jon Snow and Grey Worm, and they surrendered, and then Daenerys sets fire to everything, and he, even though they surrendered, uh, that could have been done different. She could have still set them on fire and just like mounted a building next to him and blew the shit out of them, and Jon Snow would have sat there in horror. He didn't. I mean, they killed each other anyways, uh, but it, it you know, it's a lot more impact that is lost that they could have done differently if they really were set out on that. Daenerys somehow mows down the entire entire fucking city uh, with dragon fire, I guess. They had no siege equipment. That was just all the dragon. Literally doing, like, Pac-Man shit going back and forth in lines or something. Um, yeah, like, I can, I can get why she did that, and it does 
it does feel like her character should have done that. <laughs> but all the other characters, no one did anything. No one fucking did anything. So. Cersei. Cersei ran away uh, after it's clear she lost. You know, there's there's like points too when when Daenerys blew up all the catapults, and instead of going after Cersei, you know, the one that killed Melisandre and caused all this grief and hardship and bloodshed, instead of going after her, like, you know, a leader, she just started setting fire to the city. You know, it was, it was funny because they had this, like, standoff with the Red Keep, right? They had this standoff back and forth between the Red Keep and, you know, Cersei was looking at Daenerys, Daenerys was looking at Cersei, and then she flew over there. And then just nothing really happened. She blew up part of the side of the castle, like of the the keep wall, and but like she should have literally just ran over there and blew fire into the little little window thing that she was sitting in. Did it happen? No. There is no real. There is no confrontation between Cersei and Daenerys. Once again, it's like fucking. It's like the Night King all over again, where they just didn't do any of the stuff that you'd expect good writers to make them do. There wasn't a battle between the characters. Jamie just was a fuckboy and went after Cersei anyways because his dick needs to get wet from his hot sister or something. I don't fucking know. At this point in time, like, it's like, it's literally like the characters didn't do anything for the last seven seasons and they're writing. This is like if they wrote the end to Game of Thrones in season two. <laughs> it just feels that way. Like, it's just, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, all right, yeah, okay. This Vikings is a better series at this point. Like, the battles that they have, they're better thought out. The characters are better planned. They're better thought out. And they actually do things that you feel as though if you were RPing, if you were these characters in this position, they would actually do something. Jon Snow, another fuckboy, basically doesn't do fucking anything. What is he even doing? Why was he brought back to life? What does he do? He doesn't do anything. Why is he here? You know, I mean, if, if this is a female thing, you could have just gave him a vagina. And honestly... Like, Jaina Snow, I, I honestly would not have gave a shit and make a lesbian relationship between Daenerys and him. And, and, you know, maybe then he could actually slay a dragon, or she could slay a dragon. Maybe the, maybe the Red Priestess gives him a tincture that turns him into a female. How about that? And then Jon Snow is now female Snow, Jaina Snow, you know? And then obviously he can slay, or she can slay a dragon then, you know, and maybe actually do something useful. No. Brianna... Turned into a fucking whiny bitch. What, what the fuck was that? She was like one of the strongest characters that built up. She couldn't see through that Jamie, by the way, was supposed to go back and try and kill Cersei. Like, that would have been good writing. Does he? No, he doesn't. He doesn't actually do that. He doesn't do that. And then, you know, I guess it's right that she didn't... Like, she should have actually thought... She should have bitch slapped him if she actually realized that he doesn't have the character to actually go back and try and kill Cersei. Like, if she went with him, she's like, no... I know what you're gonna do. You actually just want to kill Cersei, you know? And then John, like Jamie, just turned into like a whiny bitch. She should have bitch slapped the fuck out of him. Like, just man the fuck up. What are you doing? Do you know? Do you realize what's happening? And then recount stuff that's happened around them. <laughs> Did they do that? No, no. Brianna, a very strong female character that I thought was very well done, then just turns into like a whiny little bitch that just sits back. Nothing like her actual character. It is like uh, um. Arya and Arya and um, Padrick, Padrick, I don't know, whatever his name is, and Arya might be impregnated at this point, so she's gonna have a heir to the throne. <laughs> Fucking stupid shit. Um, yeah, she could have went over and you know, like, you know, Padrick is just—he's a boy, and Jamie's like a grown man that's been through tons and tons of wars. I, don't, I think it's Padrick. There's so many characters. Uh, let's see. Where are you? Gendry. It's Gendry, not Podrick. Podrick was the womanizer. Gendry is the smith slash uh, heir to the throne from uh, Robert from way back when. Bastard. Uh, anyways, like, you know, stuff could have played out. And, like, Brianna could have went back with Jamie, And then he could have, she could have held him to his conviction, like, in a scene with Cersei where he might have actually been thinking about eloping with her, which he did, which was really fucking stupid. Tried to elope with her, and then died in some sort of tragic environmental accident where there's no confrontation whatsoever, and rocks just fell on him. <laughs> You're just, they might be alive, they might not, who knows. It's just like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you writing? I can write better than this, and I haven't written since 
like anything in remotely decent since college. <laughs> I can write better stories than what's going on here. It's just, yeah. The fuck is happening in this in the series? T Tyrion doesn't even participate in the battle. He just walks around, looks at all the gore on the ground. Like I said, they they did all the Saving Private Ryan shit, uh, where they're like, oh, battle's so tragic, you know, shaky cam. Look at all these people dying on the ground and crying, and the city's on fire, and there's a dragon doing bombing runs around you, and. There's people walking around, you know, and they're, they have tinnitus and their ears are ringing and a daze because they got hit by a shockwave from the bombs around them, you know, and like saving Private Ryan shit, and you're just like, yeah, no. Yeah, they didn't have any siege equipment, it was just a dragon, and I get that dragons are a big deal, right? Even though there isn't apparently magic, magic does, <laughs> it's the end of the season, guys, or end of the series, and there's really still no magic. And apparently even the, the Night King didn't have magic, so <laughs> he didn't have anything. He just goes like this, and people rise about the dead. He chuckles a bit to himself internally because he makes no, no uh, reactions whatsoever, and then goes and dies. <laughs> but you're like, what the fuck ever? What are you doing? What are you doing, God? Like they literally should cancel the season right now and reshoot it. That's why I have hashtag reshoot in my title. I doubt that's going to catch on, but they 100% should reshoot the season. Spend another two years, a huge budget. And reshoot this fucking season because this is a disaster. This is literally, this is one of the worst seasons. This is just a clusterfuck of bullshit. This is one of the worst seasons of, and they just have Game of Thrones characters in it. It's just so horrible. It is so so cliche and horribly predictable. It's just fucking terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, what else happened in this in this season? Um, you know, the season in this episode. Uh, yeah, Arya, really fucking stupid. She doesn't even act like an assassin. She doesn't even do anything. She forgets about the fact that she's going to murder Cersei. Um, Hound has a predictable confrontation with the Moen. Cersei gets away from him. Um, there's just a lot of stupid... They could have done more impact with a lot of scenes, too. Like, where the Hound or the Moen kills... Uh, Cersei's henchman, she could have literally thrown him off the edge, just over the edge, just chucked him, you know, and it didn't happen. It was so fucking stupid. It was all really, really stupid, really cliche, really predictable stuff. It's fight scenes, enjoyable, nothing was really enjoyable that was happening. You know, and just, I don't, I don't even know, and like the, the wildlings, I don't know why they abandoned Jon Snow. They went, they went back home because this isn't their land, you know, and despite the fact that could have done anything, literally could have done anything. I think the whole second high, it was, it, it seems like, you know, when you, you're on your last, uh, if you've been in college, you're on your last, um, semester in college. It was it called, uh, senioritis, I believe is what it's called, where you're on your last semester and people basically just start taking, they, they pull off the throttle and they just kind of lay back and get relaxed and let things just go what, wherever at that point, you know? That's what it feels like. It feels like they stopped writing and stopped carrying at the beginning of the season. They took an extra year to do it, too. Like, the, nothing, nothing in the season except for basically the hugely, the hugely ridiculous battles, which were done horribly. Nothing in the season remotely requires the amount of time that they put into this series, it, like, in this last season. It... it this feels like they could have pumped it out last year and been fine. And they made the battle for the Night King just worse, because you couldn't see anything anyways. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. And anyways, if you if you actually look at the battles with the Night King, it's all shaky cam shit with a bunch of people running around in hoodies. <laughs> You're like, holy fuck. Where's your CG budget, HBO? What is this? This is just this is disgusting. This is disgusting. Let's see what it's at Rotten Tomatoes. I want to see what the... I want to see what... Uh, where are you at? See the episodes. Oh, they're at 57%. Yeah, the kids are starting to figure it out. This is the turning point, by the way. 48. This is the turning point right here was this episode. When these are like, okay, we got a, we got a, we got a prelude, you know, we got a, we got a prologue, right? It's, it's leading into it. Then they wasted an episode on another prologue. And then they wasted something that should have been split over the entire season, or at least, like, you know, everything except two episodes in the season, and then have comfort, even if it's not one big battle, it should have been multiple skirmishes split up throughout the season, culminating in a final battle. 
either with Cersei's forces and with the Night King's forces back and forth between the two, you know, and maybe even a three-way, you know, like banging each other from each direction, you know, with, with skirmishes and things that are broken down because this is the end. It's like these guys who wrote this didn't even fucking watch, like they haven't watched any fantasy or read fantasy books at all. Like they don't know how, like even an action movie, this is like, like what are you doing? This is the end battle. And they had it before this one. I said this at like in my 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 scathing review uh, at, after season three, where I was I was pissed off for days. They fucked that so fucking hard. It was just they just they just hammered out characters like oh yeah let's uh yeah guys yeah like they didn't even give Jon Snow like an accolade for slaying a dragon. Is he just supposed to be a bitch boy? Is this like modern feminism at work here? I really hope this isn't. I hope it's just a, an excuse for bad writing. And not some sort of under, not underhanded, but some power move is like fucking. We talked about the Avengers the other night and how Captain Marvel shouldn't even been in the film because she could have single handedly beat everyone. And then she just didn't decide to show up when half the galaxy was at stake because apparently she had to get something done, something else, something in the other thousands of planets she that she had govern governorship over. Apparently, half the known galaxy's population didn't fucking matter to her. So, <laughs> you know, I guess, yeah, yeah. By the way, Jon Snow, you are you are a part of the old. Male patriarchy, you are set up to be a hero of this film. We're going to make sure that you're not. You're going to be the hero that never was. You're like a princess, only without a kingdom. You're going to have nothing at the end. That's what we're going to do to you, Jon Snow. <laughs> what are they doing? What did they do to him? Why? He's just like someone's bitch boy. He didn't do anything. He does nothing. He did nothing. Holy fuck. Like, it just, it just shows that, like, his character, even though he's... He did evolve as a character, and, like, the actor actually definitely, like, grew. He definitely grew into something that resembles his role. And then they just took everything away from him. They're like, yeah, no, no, you don't get this, you don't get this. You don't even get this, the dragon slain accolade. You know, this guy that you're just running up to right now, the stab? You're just about to stab him in the mouth? Do or die? Yeah, no, Arya saves the day. It, you're saved by a girl, Jon Snow. That's that's the way, a little girl, by the way. You're saved by a little girl, Jon Snow. Not even the like, even smaller girl that slayed the giant. You're saved by it. Your your sister. You're saved by your, well, you're not real sister, but sorta real sister. You're saved by your sorta real sister. That's what's going on here, you know. Yeah, Jon Snow. Yeah, Jon Snow. Yeah, how's it feel? How's it feel to be a male Jon Snow? You like that? You fucking like having a dick? Yeah, yeah. No, you don't, because we're gonna just take it away from you. It doesn't matter if that's the way it's supposed to happen. We're gonna take it away anyways. It's just this fucking reeks of just fucking terrible writing. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely horrible writing. And then you just stick your your fucking propaganda dick into things where you just kind of poke at stuff and change it and shape it even though it's it's like horrible storytelling just to basically um, push your your views on people your political agenda on people and it just like it just ruins the story everything is ruined and, and like I said they could have given Jon Snow a vagina if that would have changed things and made things work I honestly do not fucking care and Brianna has a vagina but apparently she's too male and too masculine to actually represent like some sort of strong female character and then she turns into a crying bitch at the end and Jamie runs off you know and you're like what what she could have even stabbed him and I would have been more all right with that than what happened <laughs> holy fuck like what are you doing look at RR smart spark so one of my theories guys one of my theories is that RR Martin has an agreement with with HBO this is a long-winded theory, by the way. This is very long-winded. But I think he has an agreement with HBO that the end battle for the series cannot be with the Night King. And that uh, they have to end the series in their own unique way. And that involved diverging from his notes that he had for the end, basically the end of the books. So they had to diverge from that and write their own fucked up ending for it and be different enough where R.R. Martin wouldn't feel as though his IP was infringed on, like like they're actually going after his ending. Uh, even though, like, it's pretty easy to tell what is what could have happened, what could have made it much, much better. So basically he has free reign over the end of the series uh, because this this season is so much of a dumpster fire compared to last series season or all the, all the other seasons. This is horrible, horrible writing, horrible writing. It is beyond terrible, and like I said, there's tons of things they could have done differently. Uh, like I said, they could have split up the battle over all the episodes, and then had Cersei march her army up to Winterfell. This is what this, like I said, after the third episode, like march her army out there, and just instead of helping with the battle, the Night King just sat there and watched everyone die, and then they had to figure out to survive 
or you know defend against Cersei or or uh, have some sort of weird battle with her or battle of wits or something. Did they do any of that? No, no, they didn't do it. So even if they want to end it differently, like they want to have the last battle be with Cersei, there are still ways that they could have done it properly. And they didn't. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that R.R. Martin must have maybe some sort of weird agreement with HBO where they had to write their own unique ending that was different and different enough that he felt as though like they weren't going to compete with his books. Uh, because this is just a this is a trash heap. This is disgusting. I've never been so much so disgusted with the series, and it's partially because the other seasons were so much better than this. It's so much better. The character development, the character progression, the the subterfuge, the backstabbing, all of it was much better done than this season. This season is so stupid. Like I said, even if they wanted to backstab, it would have been badass if Cersei just fucking marched her army out there, sat on her horse. They're waiting. They blew the horn of Gondor for the army to charge in there and help, and then nothing came. And then nothing came. And they just sat there and watched. Or even turned around and just walked down the hill. You know, that they were just magic kill out of nowhere. You know? While the battle's going on. And then the sense of dread just washes over the people where they feel as though their their uh their army's gonna come to the rescue and, you know, helps on the way and they realize that there's no help. That things are you know, it is it is the end. Things are going down like like, there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of different ways they could have written this, so it could have been so much better, and they didn't. They did some sort of fucked up shit, and, you know, I I don't I don't know what they're thinking. I really don't. Like I, I, like I said, this feels like senioritis, where they, it's either they have an agreement with R.R. Uh, Martin to write a unique ending, and it'd be different enough from his ending, with the Night King, obviously, which is how fantasies end, because this isn't about... The Game of Thrones, this is about the goddamn Night King. This is about the end of times that are coming for them. Uh, which is obviously going to be about the Night King. You know, to put aside their petty, even not so petty differences and have to get along together at this point in time. Uh, or is like senioritis where they just stopped caring at the end of Season 7. They're like, yeah, let's write an ending. No one's going to really like it. So we'll just kind of do the best with what we got here and maybe... Maybe we'll pander to some niches that thought some things were going to happen a certain way. Let's do it that way. Kind of, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you have fucked six episodes. <laughs> it's not even eight episodes. Like, if you want to do two filler episodes, you could have made the series longer. Like, there's nothing that happened in these. There's just literally everyone's just getting ready. Everyone's getting ready. Oh, look at these weird-ass messages. Like, was it, it was in, in episode one where they found that circle of... I'm, there's some sort of weird hidden meeting... Meaning in the flaming body that was uh, shaped like like a Medusa with like tendrils like spinned in a circle. I don't know if you guys remember that flaming flaming uh, dead one or whatever it was called that was on the wall. It was like and he's lit up and he was in a circle and it was, it was a weird symbolism thing. Like they spent so much time making these tiny little gestures of symbolism and trying to trick you into believing something different was going to happen after they set it up that they forgot to write the goddamn story. <laughs> they forgot to actually write a good story. And at this point in time, I don't know how anyone can even like it at 50%. Like, they didn't get the memo. This, like, you know, it's it's pretty easy. If you didn't think episode 3 was bad, and there's a lot of reasons I made a highlight of it, I even uploaded it to YouTube. If, there's, if, you, uh, if you didn't think... By the way, that's how you can tell if anyone's actually remotely good at thinking about... Uh, media or their opinion on media as if they thought episode 3 of Game of Thrones was good because that's when the shit hit the fan when you realize this series was just turning into a dumpster fire this is like okay this is the prologue okay they kind of have a little prologue this is going to be a pretty epic ending over the next four episodes right because this is when the hour and a half episodes start because this, this is shit's really going to hit the fan at this point this is when everything's going to go down and then you realize episode, episode 3 is just terrible <laughs> absolutely terrible this is where you realize how many people are just, just fucking meme ears. They just, like, regurgitate shit that they see that's trending was episode three. And then episode four was a filler once again where it's a bridge between the last episode and then this episode of Cersei. How can anyone even give this a 40? Like, how can this even be, like, half the people like this? And I get it's Rotten Tomatoes, but this is, like, one of the best series in existence. You'd expect it to have one of the most, um, most people voting for it. And it would be most in line with what people think about it. And it could, like I said, this is just one of these things where people are basically being told what to think. And they don't think it's actually bad. And they're like, yeah. Game of Thrones is a good series, guys. By the way, Game of Thrones is a good series. Obviously, this episode is good because Game of Thrones is a good series. I've been told so. I know it's good because I watched the last seven seasons of Game of Thrones. And obviously, it's a good series. You know, 
you know, and you're just like, and you know, like I said, even even if they wanted Cersei to have the end battle, they could have bridged this so they didn't have this stupid fucking lull in between here, where they go to the stereotypical battle and burn King's Landing, <laughs> and then coincidentally they lose M Melisandre somehow in this weird ass. Uh, stealth ship accident where all of a sudden out of nowhere there's a fleet of ships despite them basically having stealth or not stealth scout aircraft in the sky that can see for miles they couldn't see they couldn't see these ships in this huge formation just right there and they're just like oh look their ships oh blah, blah, blah. they all got shot by fucking trebuchets you know and they're all dead <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you smoking what were you doing what did you do why would you do that I could have written but did they have their interns write this like, what is this? This is garbage. This is class one garbage. Class A. Top of the line. Top tier smelly garbage with some burnt baby diapers in it. Just fucking smelling like horrid. Like, they just had some nasty ass shit that just fucking plastered. Like, if you've ever if you've ever taken care of small kids because you know your brother, and they just fucking plaster the shit out of their diaper, or if you're a parent, and they just plaster the shit out of the diaper, and it just it literally squirts out the sides, and it's fucking everywhere. And you literally have to bathe them to get rid of everything that happened there. That is what Game of Thrones is right now. Literally, literally, the shit has squirted so far out of the season, it is, it has caked itself on the other seven seasons. You can, this is the best example that I can think of, of what happened here. It literally went back in time and hurt my opinion of the other seven seasons before this. Yeah, it is that bad. It is that bad. And I'm not overreacting. I usually keep a pretty level head to think about this about things guys but this is this is beyond this is one beyond they've they've went yeah yeah the, the amount of shit splatter and ball cuckening like you know <laughs> my favorite one and a lot of people don't point it out but Jon Snow getting cucked out of a dragon slayer you know like okay he doesn't kill the Night King he could have killed he could have been one of the only dragon slayers in existence the other guy being the captain douchebag that put a baby in Cersei's belly <laughs> Oh, put a baby in your belly. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, putting putting aside him, who also killed and arguably killed another dragon, you know, who who actually shot him in the heart, who knows? It might have just been one. Spoiler alert, by the way. Obviously, he didn't shoot him because that would be predictable, so we had one of the minions in a different ship actually slay the dragon because it would be so typical if a male slayed a dragon. So obviously, the guy leading the ship, the captain, the king, didn't slay any dragon. He can't do that. It was one of the henchmen in a different ship. Probably female, by the way. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Get over yourself. Like, alert. We've got, like, are we to this point now where people are so sensitive that you can't even write good stories anymore? Like, is that where we're at? And you're just like, what are you doing? Why does, why does HBO pay you money? Why do they pay you? What did you do? You should look at this. You should realize how bad it is, and you should regret this, because you ruined one of the best series in entertainment, possibly for years or decades to come. Because this is, like, it is tough to find good TV series. It is tough. It, they are very, very few and far in between. Anime, on the other hand, because it's basically all about storytelling, That's there's quite a bit more good anime, but good TV series, very, very few and far in between. And usually they have a lot of downsides to them. Battlestar Galactica, when they were on... Um, Caprica. The Caprica arcs in, not the Caprica series, but the Caprica arcs in Battlestar Galactica were really bad. They were very long in the tooth. They drug on forever. The rest of Battlestar Galactica, great. Babylon 5. Great series, except for the first season, where they had the, the weird-ass smiley captain that always smiled no matter what was happening. He was always very he was always very happy and jolly, you know? And, and obviously the CG is very ancient in that series, too, so it doesn't do it justice, and they really need a remake of Battlestar Galactica. Or not Battlestar Well, they could remake that, too, but... uh. A remake of Babylon 5. I HBO, if you're listening right now, because obviously you are, because you're going to fire these writers who are terrible. Uh, a remake of, of Babylon 5 is really up to speed at this point. If you watch Babylon 5 and you get past all the stupid shit, if you watched Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine, which a lot of people have, it is a much better version of Deep Space Nine. It's it is like it is basically like Game of Thrones, only only for the entire solar system, and written. A decade before this even like this is a long time ago and also there's you know like there's series that haven't even been made yet like the wheel of time if someone does a good series of that it is going to be bitching i really make it hope it's an anime because uh, a tv series especially would not do it justice the amount of budget you need and 
Like, if you look at these episodes, guys, in Game of Thrones, there's almost no CG in it, besides the dragon flying around. They they basically blue ball the shit out of CG, and I don't know why. Yeah, it's just... Okay. Yeah, HBO has the money to throw at, do they? They don't. Where do they spend all their money? It's just, like, on cast and, and just, like, you know, acting from the... Like, uh, reenactments, I guess you could say, with the battles, with all the people in them. I guess that's where they wasted all their money and they haven't left for CG. It's just fucking terrible. At this, when we're at this point in time, especially with the fantasy series, and there's no magic in it for the most part, what are you doing? What are you honestly doing at this point in time? What are you fucking doing? I expected something magical to happen down in the crypts with Cersei and Jaime, with the dragons, because that was the kind of weird mystery place with all the dragons down there, you know, and and the dragon butchery that was a prelude in the earlier seasons to the dragons coming back. Did anything happen down there? No. No, nothing happened down there. Nothing at all. No skeletons. They didn't find any eggs, like hatching dragons or something. And, you know, something ushering in a new era. Nothing. Like, you know, because of all the fire in the city, maybe the dragon fire lit up some eggs and then they started hatching that were kept in some safe area that they didn't know about. You know, some mystery, something, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. No, nothing, nothing, fucking nothing. Instead, Jamie and Cersei are having a heart-to-heart -heart moment because Jamie is such a fuckboy, he can't look past the fact that he has had to get his dick wet in the last couple seasons with Cersei. And she's a totally horrible human being, let alone a ruler, and he should slay the fuck out of her. You know, and they, they have a heartfelt ending where all the rocks fall on them, and they might be dead, but might not. They might have sailed off to the Bahamas, where they're now on their on their private island forevermore, and no one's gonna hear from them ever again. They're gonna raise their child in happiness, and you're just like, fuck off. Who the fuck are these people? Really, really stupid. Like I said before, it's, it's like they tried so hard to add twists, they turned good writing into bad writing because they didn't want to be predictable. They became so unpredictable, they were willing to burn everything to the ground as a metaphor and what they actually did that they just set fire to everything and you know like yeah, we don't care anymore it's, it's just okay yeah yeah it's great you literally when you do stuff like that you make people not care about the characters you make them not give a shit because what they're doing has no meaning because there wasn't any meaning behind it because it's all random because you just made shit up because you don't actually want to feel as like you don't want to be predictable anymore and you know at a certain point you get past the parlor tricks because it's no longer about parlor tricks because you don't have room to just do stupid shit because it's the end of the goddamn series, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Uh, yeah, this episode of Game of Thrones, fucking terrible. It was, I don't, I'm not as angry as I was about episode three. Episode three was when I knew the series was going to a really bad place. And that was when basically it just, it put the nail in the coffin for me. I knew, I knew the more I watched episode three, the more I knew the series wasn't going to recover. And it was just going to be fucking terrible. And the end, the end was when the, the Lich King, the Night King, just vaporized in the air. That was when I knew the series was just fuckered, and they just destroyed everything. It was it was so goddamn terrible, guys. It was so goddamn terrible. Um, and it, it really doesn't matter what they do in Episode 6. Like I said, I'm pretty sure uh, Jon Snow is going to get slayed by Daenerys because she's gone completely batshit insane. Arya is going to kill Daenerys, and Sansa is going to take over because Arya can't rule because she doesn't want to rule because she has a vagina and she's not that kind of person. She ain't no need no man or kingdom because she ain't no princess. You know, and it's it's funny, it's funny how multiple times in the series they say the people that don't want to rule are the best rulers. Guess who doesn't want to rule? Arya. <laughs> it's not just Jon Snow. Arya literally just shot Gond Gondry down. And she's like, yeah, I don't want to fucking rule. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes life just makes you do things because not only is that good fucking writing, not only is that good fucking writing, but because you don't always have a say in life. And no, they, they don't do anything. It's just, yeah, yeah, man. Respect my opinion. Respect my authority, time, man. And you're like, oh, my God. What are they doing in the series? Like, it, like I said, the baby... Baby poop diaper just spraying shit everywhere. It just, it's, it's, the seasons before this are now caked with the shit from season eight. And if you haven't watched, guys, if you have not watched Game of Thrones, good for you. Because now, uh, you will not be as angry and pissed off and hurtful or hurt at season eight. So your expectations will be much lower. You'll, this 48% here is what you're going to be going into 
is what you're going to be going into Season 8. This is, hey, look, 53% by audience score. Season 7, 93-88. Season 6, 94-93. 5, 93-90. Season 4, 97-97. Season 3, 96-97. Season 2, 96-96. Season 1, 91-96. And not really that many reviews. That's a lot of user ratings. Still not that much. It's hard to gauge. Like I said before, uh, or I've said in the past, Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, very difficult to assess how good a series is because a lot of people just aren't very good. For instance, people thinking Episode 3 of Game of Thrones was good, of the season was good. They're, you know, exist. They fucking exist. Uh, and a lot of this is just people just telling people what, what to think, you know, and 4,800 people actually isn't that much when you consider there's millions watching the series. So, I mean, just the metrics themselves are kind of fucked up. And that's just kind of the way it goes. But this definitely mirrors, this definitely mirrors basically, like, look how far the, the critical reviews, look how far the critical reviews are off from the audience score. And before they're pretty close together. Like, this is just, like... Like, the top critics here, you can even look at the reaction to shit on... I was disgusted, because I was on, on YouTube. Uh, I rarely upload videos. I've, I've been trying to upload more to YouTube. But uh, I was on YouTube looking for tags and stuff and, like, headlines to uh, name my video for the highlight that I made from the last Game of Thrones when I ranted about C Episode 3. And some of the reactions are so horribly canned. It's like, oh, oh look at this moment. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my god, Arya just stabbed the Night King! Oh, girl power! Oh, oh. You know, and you're just like... <laughs> this is America. Yeah, you are a retard. I'm sorry, you are a very unintelligent person. <laughs> just like, yeah, no one... Like, the amount of people that just knee-jerk reaction just basically retort in whatever way is trending. It's just, like I said, it's a telling sign. Episode 3 is literally a telling sign of how good people are at uh, figuring out whether or not series are good. Because this... There aren't many series where it goes so far in the opposite direction so fast. It's like literally doing a 180, pulling like a negative 100 Gs and just going complete opposite direction. Like you, you, you did not expect this. Episode 2 is like, okay, this is getting kind of weird now because there probably something should have happened at this point. And then Episode 3 is is so far in the opposite direction of everything that happened in the last seasons. You're just like, you're, you're literally left reeling in your seat based on how horrible it is. And as such, there are very few series where you can accurately gauge, because a lot of times it'll be, you know, you'll 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 see a train wreck coming, right? You'll see when it's it's going to hit the station. And you're like, yeah, that's yeah, this is kind of going to go this way. I'll give it a kind of a mediocre in between. No, because with Game of Thrones, you thought it was going to be good. You thought it was going to be so good, and then it went so bad, so fast that you're just you were literally it's just like going Mach 10 in your seat. You just literally got plastered against the back of your seat. And it's not like, oh, God, this just happened sort of a reaction where it's a surprise. It was like, wow, they're just doing a really horrible job with this. What the fuck happened to the series? At least for me, that's what it was. And I, as I mentioned before, I got angrier and angrier the more I watched episode three. And there is still, like, people clinging. Like, if you see some of the original reaction videos people have to episode three before they started getting wind of the fact that basically fans didn't like it, uh, they were, yeah, it's basically your hysterical, oh, this is so awesome sort of shit. And it's pretty easy to tell that basically people don't have a personality. Very, very easy to tell that just they don't have anything going on there. It's all acting. But trolling through uh, YouTube looking for titles and meta tags and, and different things to do was very difficult. Uh, it was very difficult watching that shit. And some people even, uh, not adding them, but they actually went back through and they rewrote, uh, not rewrote, they did another piece kind of an, and they uh, added on a bit to the original review. And they're trying to basically backpedal on what they said, but not enough where it seems like they're wrong in their original review. And <laughs> it's hilarious watching them do that. Anyways, Game of Thrones, guys, are fucking terrible. On the opposite side of the spectrum, though, guys, the opposite end of the side of the spectrum here is Veep. Took a year off, by the way. Veep is a comedy about the vice president of the United States. Um, it's an HBO show. It's basically a lot like Parks and Rec. It's a lot like Parks and Rec. Uh, they took a, took a year off, and you know sometimes I don't I don't have any problem with that, especially if you maintain status quo after you come back, because a lot of times series will slip downhill. The longer the more they write it about, they'll run out of content, they'll get burned out. 
and you need time off. You need time off to recoup and, you know, come back with energy. It, it happens, right? It fucking happens. This, they didn't need a fucking year off to do what they did in this series. They did not need a year off. Maybe just for, rent, not rendering, but uh, setting up the battle scenes. But otherwise, it's just... Anyways, Veep. Veep, guys. Uh, this season of Veep was really good. It was really, really good. And, I mean, it's, you know, Parks and Rec is just like, oh, it's like a sitcom. You know, it's, it's kind of funny... You know, it's like just your stereotypical comedy, right? Uh, Veep is kind of that way, but they try to throw, throw curveballs in there on occasion. This season of Veep went a lot into political satire, uh, basically surrounding modern issues in current American politics. And then they started throwing House of Cards, House of Cards backstabbing into things. And it actually turned pretty brutal. It wasn't until you, you didn't really start to realize, basically, that it wasn't really... You're starting to lose kind of the funny feeling from this, like, halfway through the season of Veep. I finished watching it earlier tonight. It's like halfway through Veep, and you're starting to realize that, wow, Selena, which is the the presidential candidate, uh, she did a lot of bad shit. And it mirrors, actually mirrors an awful lot of modern politics and the sacrifices people make and how little backbone they actually have as a candidate and how random politics are and how weird people react to things that don't fucking make sense but at the same time it wins and then people just start doing it because that's what makes you win speaking of things that make you win HBO's doing well guys you wrote a good review about it yeah so they, they, they just stop thinking about things it's like the American public in general and then they just end up with these really weird ass weird ass moments where just random shit happens and then it works out for the candidates uh yeah, yeah, I actually really, really like the end of Veep. It, it just because the other seasons weren't really that great. You can't, I can't really hold it in that high of a seam. It's still basically a sitcom. Uh, but at the end, the end of season seven, which is the last season of Veep, the end of season seven of Veep, uh, you actually kind of felt bad for some of the characters. Like you actually started having kind of this emotional reaction to the way that Selena was. Uh, interacting with some of the characters and the stance that she took and the sacrifices she made in order to basically achieve the House of Cards end goal of being a president and at the same time very much mirroring modern politics and the way modern politics works and what people do in them and the cut through tactics and just the random shit that just happens. I was actually like Game of Thrones is a train wreck and Veep on the other hand turned out to be something these little gems guys that just pop out of nowhere that just don't you don't really expect them are very very cool like you know guardians of the galaxy sort of things on the first one right just pop out of nowhere and i did not expect the end of veep that happened i was just i, I watched the episode of game of thrones tonight i was like yeah this really sucked i'm just gonna walk watch another episode of veep here and then i just watched all the last three that i had to watch and i was like oh this is actually really good this actually turned out to be really good um but those those series are pretty rare good writing is pretty rare and and just media, even Game of Thrones couldn't even accomplish mediocre writing. So I don't, I don't know what they're thinking, guys. This is just this, this whole, this whole season was just a dumpster fire. It is. I keep saying dump, dumpster fire because it is. It's just, it was fucking terrible. All of the choices that they've made in the series, how horrible they are. It just, it just got worse and worse and worse, and just got finally to the point where bad. It's just bad and you don't care what happens to the characters anymore it's just so horrible uh but series i'm actually waiting for that i'm actually very very interested to see expanse syphy dropped it because syphilis doesn't actually know what a good series looks like uh magician's actually not horrible it, it has kind of its ups and downs to it but magician's actually still very happy with that series uh because of the kind of the the weird twists they constantly do on stuff and apparently there's actually gonna be another season i thought they're gonna end it after the last season but there's gonna be another one um Magician's Expanse, though, oh god, that's that's actually starting to turn into a really good series. And you kind of found, you figured it out. It was like a gem. You felt it in the first season when they're starting to do all this weird shit. I love Dystopias, by the way. I love Dystopias. Uh, they're starting to do all this weird shit in season one, and then it started getting you know weirder and weirder and weirder. And you're like, wow, I'm actually intrigued. What's what's going on here? You know? And it's it's kept going that way, and it turned into a space opera with pretty good CG. Um, it just you know, it's gotten it's gotten a lot better, and and Game of Thrones maybe maybe this is maybe this is kindness by the writers by letting us down by making the last season horrible so you won't feel so bad when the series ends. Maybe that's what's going on here. We're gonna end the series in such a horrible way that people won't care if it's gone. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and that's that's actually pretty legitimate. That's pretty legitimate. This is this is this is so horrible. This is so fucking horrible. Oh, well, so many things were done wrong in this season. And I basically in, in copied. We talked a bit about episode four. It wasn't really. It didn't really. It was a bridge episode. But episode three we talked about a lot, and episode five obviously we covered. Episode six. I don't think it's gonna matter. It it doesn't matter at this point. It's it doesn't. They've they've done all that they can at this point, and then you're just gonna throw some twists by who kills who sort of shit. And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter anymore. And you know. They can write whatever they want. It's like, oh, and then they woke up from a dream, guys. Guess what? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. It was all a dream, you know. And you're just like, okay, whatever. Bad writing, horrible writing, guys. Anyways, 